Okay, what I wanted to talk about today is emissive lighting. Emissive lighting is light that is emitted from an object. Emission makes a rendered object appear to be self-luminous. So we can actually turn an object into a light source. It's a special effect, a special way to do it, but we can actually take an object, any piece of geometry, and we can either through how we put a material on it, an emissive material, or actually turn having a light attached to it and the light uh, attaching to the object and making the object an actual light source. Some examples here would be like a light bulb on a wall. So any kind of lighting scenario where you have light bulbs, then you might want to put an emissive material on them or actually make them actually truly emissive where they're actually lighting the scene. We usually couple that with other lighting scenarios. Here's a situation where it's like some crystals in a cave. All of the cave that's lighting here is actually coming from the geometry of the crystals. So there's no other lights in here. That's what's lighting this scene. Now, in this situation, you've got some emissive lights, but you've also got an, an, an atmospheric effect that's happening on this too. So you really can't talk about emissive lighting without also talking about volumetric lighting. Volumetric lighting is where we're actually coming in and we're adding like an atmosphere. It's a lighting effect that adds glows to things because an emissive by itself doesn't add a glow. It lights the scene, but it doesn't add a glow. So we come back and apply a volumetric lighting trick, which applies like an airspace to the scene in which the light can be filtered through that to create an atmospheric irradiance effect, a glow, if you will. Some examples here. Now, as this light, and you see that it kind of streaks through this, okay? This is referred to as God lights, is kind of the term for that. And that's a volumetric effect. Here you've got a almost like a fog over the entire scene. Okay, so that's what we're talking about volumetric, that you're adding an atmospheric lighting property to it. Now, they don't have to be God lights. It could be just a density here where it seems like, you know, that there's you know, maybe some dust in the air or something, okay? That's all a volumetric lighting. Here's a very subtle volumetric as the light comes through the scene. So your volumetric doesn't have to be in your face. It could be very subtle. So those are all examples of volumetric lighting. So what we're going to be discussing and demonstrating today in 3ds Max, we're going to be using Arnold as our renderer, and we're going to be looking at emissive lighting and also volumetric all together. Okay, so what I have here is just a little room. It's just a box. So let's go look at that so you can just see what my setup is here. Basically, I've just got a box and I've got a camera and I've got a light up here at the top. Just got an RL light sitting up here. It's a disc and 6500 Kelvin and a camera looking in the box. Okay, I got a Taurus knot in here. And so let's turn our safe frame on and then we'll just do a active shade. And so this is what I got the basic setup. I've got, uh, let's look at our material editor here. And let's go here, create a new view, material, get all scene materials. And what I've got here is this is the room material, and let's name this one. This is my widget material. So If I got that right. Yeah, so that's on the widget. This is on the room. Uh, the widget still has a material, has a 
it's reflections on it. It's nice and glossy on the room. I've turned uh, that down, so there's not much reflection on it. Okay, so nothing magical about anything right here. All right, so emissive is where we make this widget material. If we go down here where it says emission. I'm going to zero this out, and I'm going to change this to white. And then as I start adding emission to it, it becomes a light source. It's like magic. Now, this uh, doing emission through a material is a little noisy. You'll see there's a lot of grain in here, so you definitely have to turn up the um, render uh, iterations when you're doing emissive. And of course, I can continue turning this up where it's really bright. That's one way to do emissive. Now, the thing about it is, is that you lose all form when you go up at 100%. So, a lot of times you don't want to go to 100% because you want to keep some of the form that's in it. Sometimes, what we're wanting is uh, something that is white, like this, but doesn't put out any light. Okay, so we want it to be the focus, something brilliant like that, but we don't want it to put out any light. By default, that doesn't can't work, but here's how you do that. You pick your object, and then you go in, and you're going to put an Arnold Properties on it. Now, under your Arnold Properties, up here at the top, under General Properties, there's a Visibility section. If you turn that on, then these are all active. And so these are different parts of what we're seeing. If you turn off camera, then it's still glowing, but we don't see the object. If I turn the camera back on. But now, if I turn diffuse off, then the glow cannot hit a diffuse surface. And therefore, it will not light the surface. So there are times, and I do this sometimes with lights, where I want it to be self-illuminated like this, but I don't want it to light the scene. Okay, so you do that by putting an Arnold Properties on it, unchecking uh, Diffuse. If I turn it back on, there we go. Okay, so let's look at another way to approach this though. So I'm gonna go over here and turn our emissive back down. Now what I'm going to do is come in here and put an Arnold light in here. So I'm just going to click right here. And of course by default, it's a disc or a quad. Okay, but we can change this to a mesh. Okay, then you need to go to your modify. And then we can choose a mesh. mesh. So if I click here and then I click. the torus knot, then it becomes a light source. So as I start turning up the intensity, of this light, then it starts emanating a light. Of course we can make that a color also. And so this is another way to have an object emanate light. And of course we can mix these too. Let's go ahead and copy this green and put it in here. And then I'll start turning this up. And I can actually do both of them at the same time.
Everybody got it? So there's two ways to make an object a missive. One way is with a material. One way, which is turning the geometry into a light by making an Arnold light and then picking mesh and picking it. Both of those are ways to do this. Now, another thing that we want to do sometimes though is we want to put a glow on things okay so let's do this by what we're going to do is go to our rendering setup and in our rendering setup on our Arnold render tab here if you go down here into down here into atmosphere right here okay this normally has nothing in it and let's just clear that so you click here and under Arnold under atmosphere we add an atmosphere volume now you can do it there or you can actually do it over here too here's your atmosphere we can pull a volume out you can do it that way too and then drop this in as an instance. So by default, once we have it in there, we can close that. By default, this density sets the glow, okay? And so it's set to zero. So once I start kicking this up, it's going to start glowing our scene, okay? It's going to start putting a glow on it. Now, what I'm going to do is do it on a light. So, I think what I'll do here is let's turn our widget to have no emissive properties. And we'll go ahead and I'm just going to turn off this light for right now. And let's go ahead and put, well, we're going to put a photometric light in here just a free light and let me go to our top view and I'm going to put a free light like right over the top of it like so and then let's go back to our camera and now you're going to see it's got a glow on it. Okay, so if I turn this back to zero, we have no glow on the light. As a matter of fact, let's pull it down. There we go. Now, by default, we can't see our lights in the scene. And what I want to do is change this from point, which gives me this harsh shadow. I'm going to change it to a sphere. Okay. Because a point is not a shape. Therefore, you can never see it. It also gives you a harsh shadow. But if you change it to a sphere, then it'll have a softer shadow. And the larger the sphere the softer the shadow. So you're controlling the shadow by the size of the sphere. Now, let's turn our density on. And you'll start to see some glow on there. It's pretty sensitive. And then I can change the size of the sphere. Let's turn our, a little bit more punch to it. Size of that glow up there. Now, another thing that you can do with a photometric light, which is kind of nice, is you can go in here and do an attenuation. So we're going to turn on this, both of this use and show. Now what show means 
is that when an object is picked and oops and when that show is off if I deselect you can't see the fall off rings if I turn on show then when I click off of it you can still see the fall off rings and this is how far the light is working so this is we're turning the light so it's not physically accurate anymore when we turn these on we're saying we want to manually control how much light it's a hundred percent light from here to there there's no light outside of there and it trails off in between so a kind of thing to do is to go over here to your end and right click on it to zero it all out so now that has no um, light is not coming out of it then if I click and I hold this and I pull out you'll see some rings coming out there it's pushing the end ring out okay and then if I want it to have a softer edge to that I take the end and I start pushing that out okay so I can kinda control my glow that's happening there but there's a problem with this is that there's no way for me to control how much glow this has other than through this global setting can't really control that so what if I wanted this up high but I wanted less glow on it because I have more than one light in here okay so let's say let's move this over we'll hold down the shift key actually I won't do it that way what I'll do is we're going to put an Arnold light in here. So that's a photometric light. So let's make an Arnold light. And it's going to click in here. And then that put me. Okay. And that's my one on the bottom. Okay. So here's my other one. And I'm just going to align it to this one. So they're aligned, and then I'm going to move it off over here. So this is an Arnold light. So this is a photometric light. This is an Arnold light. Let's go ahead and turn this into a point. Now, point Arnold is similar to a, um, a sphere over here. So let's bring up our render again. Now, we'll get that to where it's about the same. But it doesn't have a way to control a fall off. So in other words, this one had, this is a truly physical, so Arnold's kind of snobbish, but like, well, they're kind of like, oh, well, it's all physical. This one is physical by default, but then I can come in here and say, okay, I don't want to be de uh, physical. I want to tell it how to roll it off. Well, an Arnold light doesn't do that, but you can go into here and put a modifier on it. So you go in here and put an Arnold decay filter on it. Okay, and now it's got near and far attenuation. So it's basically, we've added a filter onto this, which is going to give us these properties. So now I can do my far attenuation. get a similar effect to it now the benefit of this a little bit is that I can go back down into my Arnold here and we're zeroing this out so that I can totally control that size through here See if we can get it pretty close to the other one. Pretty close. Don't have to be exact. Okay, but here's the cool thing. 
on the Arnold light itself, down here under contribution, these are controls of what the light actually is doing. So it's got a volume setting in here. So as I turn this volume down, I'm controlling how much volume to that particular light. So the Arnold light, through doing it this way, you actually have control of that light, whereas a photometric, you don't really have control of it. So now, if I, let's just turn this one off. Oops. So now I have more ability to crank this up a little bit more, and then I can, through my Arnold light, adjust how much I want it to actually be uh, affecting it, okay? So you can do a combination between these two. So there's where it's a little bit different. So what you can do is, I'm going to copy this arm light over for a second here. I think I am. Okay, so I have two lights. But now I'm going to take this light, and I'm going to turn off that attenuation. So it's giving me light throughout the scene. But then I'm going to come over here and zero out its volumetric. So it's not affecting the volumetric at all. So this one is actually lighting the scene. But it's not being affected by the volumetric. And then this one is the one that's not lighting the scene because I've limited how much light is coming out of it. I mean, it's a lighting it a little bit. If I go and turn this one off, you'll see it's putting a little bit of light in here, but not much. So it's kind of a trick. You have one of them that you put in here that you light the scene with. make it a little bit bigger which will soften my shadow up because when this is set to zero it's giving me a harsh shadow so we put a bigger ball on it soften the shadows but because of coming in here on this um, the volume and turning this all the way down then it doesn't affect that okay and there are times where I do some other stuff where I will do some let's copy this one Come on, yeah, like this. And let me see here. Let's switch to a perspective for a second and pull it forward. Okay, go back to our camera. This one, I don't need that filter on it. I only want it to affect specular. So I can zero all of this stuff out. So the only thing it's doing is creating a specular highlight. And I do that sometimes for some kind of special effects to get a specular exactly where I want it but then it's not lighting the scene and it's not in a glow. Everybody getting it? Okay, so what we've learned is we can do emissive by the material that we put on it. We 
can do it like that. Certain benefits to that. Or we can zero that out and come back to my other light that I turned off. Go down. This one. Okay, and I'm going to turn that on. And then it is causing. It's attached to the mesh and I'm getting a glow from the mesh. And then to get atmospheric, a volumetric. Then in your Arnold rendering setup. You scroll all the way down here where it goes environment, background, atmosphere. You want to go to this area, atmosphere. And then in there, you load a Arnold atmosphere. You have other controls in here. Um, attenuation, you have some attenuation in here. Okay, this attenuates any light that it's seen. Okay, you control that. You got an ethic trans eccentricity also okay these are both ways to roll off the glow on it okay but the true way to really control that's that's controlling a glow of anything that's in here okay so it's like an overall glow almost like an exposure control but then i can control uh, the specifics by uh, a combination of your decay here of how far this is going out to for that light itself and then a combination of coming in here and then turning down how much I'm allowing it to affect the volume of that particular light so this is a way that you can do especially lighting in your scenes uh, things like candles and things of that nature can be handled through a combination of emissive and volumetric effects. Okay, hopefully that helps you guys. All right, thank you.